morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday, and welcome to today's edition of Freight Waves. Now, I'm Kaylee Nix here with Michael Vincent. Ready to get your Tuesday started? Right on. Thank you, Kaylee. It's a it's a beautiful day here from Freight Alley. Uh, coming up on the show, we're going to talk to Metafar about what they're going to be doing here at F3, what we can expect from those guys. We'll also have our research corner and net zero carbon segment coming up next hour. But first, a cooling economy means more layoffs, which leads us to our top story as Convoy announces its second round of layoffs. Clarissa Hawes joins us now with the latest on that. Clarissa, what's going on here at uh, Convoy? Me on your show today. Um, yes, I, I got an, an, a, a message yesterday morning stating that Convoy was indeed um, forced to, um, you know, to lay off more folks um, due to like the geo, the ongoing geopolitical tension. You know, the the economy. You know. And their customers are, are very unsure about, you know, a lot of things going on in, in the world. And so they were reacting to what their customers needed from them the most. And, and so that meant um, consolidating some, some departments as well as um, eliminating some jobs maybe that overlapped in some areas. Clarissa, this is not Convoy's first layoff rodeo. They announced a first round just about four or five weeks ago, if I recall right, right at the end of September. And this came on the heels of securing a round of funding. And so we've now got one funding round, two rounds of layoffs. Is there something maybe bigger going on at the company right now than, than they care to talk about? Well, when I, I got I didn't get a lot of information out of Convoy yesterday. Just as when as I was speaking, you know, to a spokesperson for the company, they were in the middle of, um, you know, talk of the one on one conversations with some of the employees that were, you know, being let go. So I'm hoping to have more information throughout the day as far as you know the ongoing situation there which is but i think a lot of the you know from all all the you know i'm seeing all of these um types of companies are either you know imp implementing hiring freezes or they're looking at um you know like where they can cut you know maybe a, f a positions or you know keep run a little t tighter and leaner right now just with all of the unknowns you know in you know with you know in in the economy right now yeah, we're seeing this across the board. Well, yeah, we're seeing it across the board in all different sectors, from the tech sector, sector even into the asset based, obviously, where people are tightening up a little bit uh, as this continued uh, freight recession uh, moves moves forward in the uncertainty moving in through fourth quarter, first quarter. I mean, we're going into a traditional time, a time when traditionally, I should say, uh, things are softer first quarter, right after right after the holidays. And this peak season is not uh, anything to write home about that's going to support uh, a, a, a number of employees through that season. So tightening the belt is uh, the uh, letter of the day right now, as we're seeing that in other areas, right? You've, we've got some uh, asset-based carriers as well that are tightening the belt a little bit right now, huh? Yes, and I reported recently on, and it, it's not a large company, and a lot of the bankruptcies we're seeing are not by large companies, like with, I recently mm -hmm. covered Navarro Trucking, out of Bellwether, um, California. And and the, the thing I always look, you know, I see several that come through, but um, for like companies like this, it was like they serve the ports, you know, that, you know, and that was their typically their main, you know, those moves were to and from and, you know, the ports and, and they couldn't, you know, obviously couldn't, we're struggling to make it there. And then also I'm, I've been kind of following companies that have these emergency loans through the SBA right now that, you know, like unlike the PPP loans that are forgiven, can be forgiven, these um, economic um, loans through the SBA ha have to be repaid. Mm. You know, there was a, a deferred period for two years, um, you know, as far as, you know, having to pay them, but those are going to start coming due now. Um, you know, it, the date that, uh, like two years from the date that you your loan originated is now when you're going to have to start making some payments on 
on those loans. And so we're seeing a lot of companies that that applied for these types of loans that really thought, you know, things were going to be on the up and up, especially when like this company got into business right around the boom, you know, like when COVID was, you know, they, they were moving things and everybody needed things ordered online. And, and, and that's when they kind of built their company. And when you think that that growth, if you don't think that that, that's ever going to end, you know, you, they ramped up their operations, they bought more trucks. I'm thinking that, that, you know, business was going to continue this way. And, and then, you know, it, it didn't, unfortunately, and, and they, um, you know, I, their executives aren't speaking to freight waves, their attorney, I have, I've reached out, mm. but it's really unclear, um, you know, if that was, uh, was a factor or just some people with the AB5 are getting out of California. Uh, there's a lot of things in California going on right now that makes it yeah. very hostile, I think, to do business there. Absolutely. And that's, that's a really good point. And I think that we can anticipate seeing more and more of these shutdowns, maybe even some absorptions of these smaller companies into mm. these larger companies. I know that, you know, we've talked a lot about how kind of M&A activity is slowing down just due to economic conditions, but this could possibly present an opportunity for these bigger companies to ramp up that M&A activity again by just absorbing those little tiny ones who may, might be going out of business, right? You've got this carrier, the Navarro Trucking Company, they've got 15 power units, 15 drivers. So not a super large company, not good enough or big enough to stay afloat on their own. Do you think that we could maybe see some of these smaller companies maybe reaching out to any bigger carriers or just companies in general saying, hey, give me a life raft. Let's talk about an acquisition or a partnership to help me stay alive. I think that is a possibility. And I know that the equipment is very sought after right now, um, especially if, you know, in this case, the, the equipment, you know, is they, there were a lot of loans on the equipment mm. here, but, you know, there's still that, um, that ongoing search for, you know, trucks that meet, you know, the EP, you know, the California's carb emission rules and everything that they, would like to have right now, and and all of the equipment in this case did what was meeting um, to be able to continue working at the ports. But yes, I do think there there'll be an opportunity for some of these larger co companies to snap up the the assets and and the drivers as well. Yeah, I mean, it, it, this is a, a great example of of uh, why AB five hurts hurts companies when you can't flex up and flex down with contracted labor. It makes it very very difficult to uh, maintain your bottom line and to not go through massive hiring sprees and then layoffs, mm -hmm. etc. And a lot of that work is done on a weekly or daily or monthly basis, seasonal type of stuff that screws us up. I've had friends telling me, you know, they are acquiring drivers from the ports just because, not because of AB5 on the West Coast, but because there's just no work. Right. Right. Uh, there ha I haven't seen any fallout actually from AB5 yet as far as that is concerned. But I mean, that's obviously a concern. But it's really just due to lack of business and jumping on board with these others. Then you got the potential of, like you said, you've got this this uh, equipment as we see more and more of these chapter 11s or 7s or acquisitions, et cetera, driving down the price of used, uh, used equipment as uh, it's already starting to fall, but even faster, right? Now you've got these, it's like a vicious cycle, right, Clarissa? When you look at this stuff, you've got holding a note on a $100,000 uh, piece of equipment that was really worth about $50,000, and now it's worth $50,000 again, right? Because of all these things, and it just perpetuates itself, yeah? And now there's no freight, you know, like to move in some of these areas where, you know, they that's their whole livelihood is, is right now with... Um, you know, from what I'm hearing is, you know, import ports are down and, uh, you know, there's, they're, you know, where they could make four or five moves a day, they're barely getting one right now. Mm -hmm. And some are canceling kind of the night shifts, you know, gates because of lack of, you know, work as well. So yeah, it's, it is a vicious cycle. It's going to be interesting to watch for sure going forward in how Q4 shakes out. I think it's going to have it, a It'll be really interesting. Factor. We got to, we'll be talking to Sal Mercogliano here soon, mm -hmm. I'm sure, in the, in the, we always talked to him weekly, I guess, right? <laughs> but, I mean, I saw a post from him, you know, obviously Sal, and uh, talking about, okay, 
Did we, did, are, 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 are shippers and BCOs putting us in for another whiplash effect? Did we overcorrect? Did we overcorrect again? Mm -hmm. and, and I would guess, you know, based on our history, yes. Absolutely. All right, Clarissa, thank you for joining us this morning. Great to have you as always. We'll talk to you soon. Okay, thanks for having me. Thanks, Clarissa. All right, we're going to head on over to The Wall. We've got our first carrier update of the morning with Tony Mulvey and Donnie Gilbert.